Celebrating the destruction of others. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Another major political figure, Governor Mark Sanford of South Carolina, blows up. Sanford has admitted to an affair and is likely done in the political world. As soon as I heard the news, I knew some on the left would celebrate because the governor is a conservative Republican. Now, we all know that some on the right exploited the Monica Lewinsky situation. So reveling in the pain of others is not limited to one ideology. But the far left has been especially vicious lately. And so Governor Sanford's young sons and his wife will bear the brunt of that. Also, you may remember the right has been fairly restrained about the John Edwards situation. Here at Fox News, we reported the Edwards affair, but did not dwell on it or celebrate it. That's important to remember. Edwards has two young kids and his wife is ill, so to gratuitously demean him would be wrong. I mean, this is by far and away the highest rated cable news outfit, okay? And we're growing while the others are disintegrating. Why do they want to make enemies, uh, particularly a guy like John Edwards, who was treated very well here, 33 times he was on us, and we poured over the transcripts. There's never one time that, was, that this guy was unfairly treated uh, while he was on his uh, network. Why do they want to do that? What do you have in common with John Edwards? I can't imagine anything. And the truth about John Edwards. It isn't pretty. <laughs> Edwards is running a preposterous campaign. I love it when you wade in on Edwards because to me, the guy is just an overly quaffed pillar of dim. He makes Clifford Irving look like Sir Thomas More. And if you say you can't see through that guy like use Neutrogena. But you should know that 400 bucks for a haircut is expensive any day. Because Americans have a way of seeing through double talk. They also have a way of seeing through something worse, far, far worse. Phonies. There are two Americas, those who buy Edwards and those who think he's a complete phony. Now, Talking Points tries to respect all of those who want to serve their country, but Edwards is an exception. I have no respect for him. You can't put the rib kick in on John Edwards enough for me because that is an empty vessel. Let's, let's, run, the vi let's run the video, which I think is the funniest video that YouTube has ever put up here. Yes, of and your John friend Edwards Michelle Malkin on the, has it on, on the site set, too. On the set getting getting ready for an interview this goes on for five minutes the primping of the hair over and over and over again <laughs> and meanwhile you know when you juxtapose those images that go on forever with the images that we have out today that came this al-qaeda manual that talks about drilling hands severing limbs dragging people behind cars he is an intellectual lightweight Senator Edwards isn't smart enough. Edwards is going nowhere. His strategy is killing him. John Edwards looks dopey. He's a phony. A complete phony. Now, he is maybe, a phony. Maybe, maybe we, I we would know listen him. again. We know him, and uh, he, he is. And that's too bad. I'm sorry I have to say that. I have nothing against John Edwards. He seems intelligent and sincere. Even though Edwards frequently attacked FNC and me in particular. But last night, some liberal pundits could not wait to gleefully exploit the Sanford story. Shamefully, shamefully, the Washington Post led the way. Here's Post editorial writer Jonathan Capehart. You know, a colleague of mine, Chuck Lane, uh, made a little uh, a joke uh, just before I came on air. He said, at the rate the Republicans are going, the only marriages that will be worth anything are the, the gay folks getting married in Vermont. Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson, one of the biggest media haters in the country, actually said, quote, I'm grateful to the governor. I'm grateful to the governor for doing this, unquote. Something very, very wrong at the Washington Post. And then there's Paul Begala, a guy who ran around screaming it was only about sex while defending President Clinton. I am sick of getting lectures from Republicans that I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good Christian, I'm not a good patriot. they to cut that crap and do their real job and stop lecturing care. the rest of us about gay rights and, and, and sex. I now, I could spend all night citing the nasty attacks by far-left loons, but one particularly annoyed me. Nancy Pelosi's daughter, Christine, a liberal activist, said, quote, So Governor Sanford is another family values hypocrite. How many times did he deny privacy rights and marriage equality to others. How many more Sanfords until the GOP decides
to drop the hopelessly hypocritical opposition to privacy rights and marriage equality, unquote. Privacy rights, of course, is code for unrestricted abortion. So it's obvious what Ms. Pelosi is doing. If you support any protections for the unborn or traditional marriage, you had better be a saint or they're going to come after you. Yeah, you're goddamn straight. You better practice what you fucking preach. You motherfuckers are the biggest hypocrites ever. Conservatives are always the biggest motherfucking hypocrites. If you sit there and talk about the sanctity of marriage and, and how, how important family is and that's why you're against gay rights and then you go fuck around on your wife and dick over your marriage and screw your kids and all that shit or, or better yet, fuck little boys or, or you're against gay marriage but you do online gay shit you shouldn't be taken seriously. So when I point that shit out, that's for fucking real. That's some serious shit. Practice what you fucking preach, douche. Absolutely vicious. Absolutely un-American. Okay, where does it say in the Constitution that, that going after hypocrites is un-American, you fucking retard? You pull this shit out of your ass. I mean, really. I mean, and it's gotta, you gotta reach up pretty deep to get to that kind of bullshit. Again, there are hateful ideologues on both sides, but the fanatical left in this country will do just about anything to advance their agenda. What, like like claiming to have the moral high ground while acting fucking like skeevy motherfuckers? You, you conservatives act like you think liberals act, and then you, you Bill O'Reilly, have the, the fucking audacity to call us the far left loons. The far left loons that fucking think gays should be able to get married. How fucking loony. I uh, think that conservatives that talk a lot of shit, but don't fucking, they t talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. So, you know, for people like that, we usually just say, fuck you, shut the fuck up. Some in the Muslim world believe in stoning people. Apparently some in the USA believe in stoning as well. Stoning with words. That right there deserves a fucking brand new face palm. So here it is, people. Now for the top story tonight, reaction to the situation and the latest on Iran. Joining us from Austin, Texas, Fox News analyst Carl Rove. Okay, so you can see uh, Pelosi's, uh, Ms. Pelosi's statement was the clearest of this, but the Washington Post also very deeply involved in intimidating anyone who's pro-life, traditional marriage. You better not say a word if you are not a saint or yeah. we're going to get you. Am I wrong? Uh, no, in fact, that's, it's a curious double standard. Okay, I think that's got to be the end of the fucking video right there. When, when a conservative is talking about how liberals have a double standard after a conservative has just admitted to having an affair that was talking about fucking the sanctity of marriage and shit like that, uh, and then they have the nerve to turn that around and make it a double standard that liberals have, yeah, fuck you. I mean, fuck you Bill O'Reilly, fuck you Karl Rove, and fuck you Fox News. Cocktopus out. Would, would they have accepted conservative commentators attacking, uh, using Governor Spitzer's involvement with a prostitute or Barney Frank's imbroglio involving a male prostitution service being run by a boyfriend of his out of, uh, out of his own basement apartment? Would they have assumed it was proper then to take those incidents involving personal behavior and make broader statements about, say, gay marriage or pro-abortion policies?